You know, this morning we were talking just about rejection. About rejection, about being rejected. And I can look in this room and without even asking you, I already know that everyone in this room, you've already felt what it feels like to be rejected. And it hurts. Especially from like family. Have you ever, has anyone ever been rejected by family? I mean, they've told you that you're not worth much or maybe you're your stepfather's child or, or you're not my real sister or brother or, or you're not the same complexion as the rest of your siblings or whatever the reason is, they've, they've rejected you. Maybe you grew up and you were the tallest one in the house and they made fun of you. Or maybe you were the shortest or the skinniest. I mean, you've been rejected in relationships. You may have heard the words, I don't want you anymore. I mean, how gripping, how, how damaging could that feel like to hear those words that, that you're not enough. Maybe you've been at a job and then they said, well, you know what, we don't need you anymore. Rejected. And it hurts. Can I share some good news with you? It says in Psalms 27 verse 10 that even if your mother or your father yes. forsake you, yes. <laughs> that I will take you as my own. <laughs> that even if you're rejected by those that are closest to you, even if your job says, hey, you have no value with us anymore, that I still love you. In the book of Judges, chapter 11, I'm going to ask you just to stand with me. We'll read it. I'm going to read a verse here. Just stand with me if you can. And this time, I want us to read this together, okay? On the count of three, we'll begin, and let's just read this all together. One, two, three. Jephthah the Gileadite was a great warrior, but he was the son of a prostitute, and Gilead was his father. Can, can we just read that again? And, and, and I want you to emphasize the word but. But. Because I, I guarantee in your life, you're going to experience some buts. You're, like, you're, you're great here, but. And that's what rejection feels like. Rejection is that you may be great at all these other things. However, there's this one thing that you're not really good at. So can we say it again? So it says, Jephthah the Gileadite was a great warrior, but he was the son of a prostitute. And Gilead was his father. The person that uses butts in your life is not God when it comes talking about your past, but it is the enemy. See, when God says butts, when God uses that terminology, God uses it in the different sense. He would say that you were a sinner, but you were saved by grace. You understand? When the enemy uses the word but, he talks about you were something great, but this is who your daddy was. This is who your mama was. This is how your grades were in school. You know, this is what you didn't do, what you did do. You're always bringing up the junk about your life. But I tell you today, rejection is not for God's people. Rejection is not for the children of God. This is not something that you need to take on as an identity for yourself. That we need to... Start telling sentences and stopping at the comma. That we need to be able to say that who we are without the buts. 
without the what anyone else has to say. We need to know that God has made us children of God, and there is no but about it. Hmm. Father, I pray as I share these few words that the hearts of your people will be able to receive the word from the throne room of God. In Jesus' name we pray and we say amen. amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Now Jephthah the, the Gileadite was a warrior. But he was the son of a prostitute. Like, what does that have to do with anything else? I mean, I mean wh wh why was that even in the text? Well, well, if you continue to read on, and it says that Gilead's wife, he bore him sons, and when they grew up, they drove Jephthah out and said to him, You will have no inheritance in our father's house because you are the son of another woman. Isn't that just like the devil? Yeah. Trying to disqualify you because of what you don't have. Isn't that just like the enemy? Trying to say that you don't have an inheritance when God says you have a godly inheritance. Yeah. Amen. Now, isn't that just like family? <laughs> to find something to push you away. Not all family, but we all have seen it. Some of us have experienced it. And those are the ones that should be so dear to you are the ones that sometimes hurt you the most. Has anyone ever experienced that? So the response was, so Jeff to fled from his brothers. And he lived in the land of Tob. And then some lawless men joined Jephthah and traveled with him. I was wondering why would the text start out by telling us that he was a warrior? You know, why didn't it start out the other way? You know, Jephthah was a son of a prostitute, all right, and he became a great warrior. See, the beautiful thing, and let, let, let's look at how God sees us. He sees us for the possibility, for the potential, and not for the beginning. He doesn't see us for our starting place. He looks at us for where we're ending up. So the writer writes here, and, and he wanted us to know instantly that he was a what? He was a warrior. Started out by telling us who he is and who he is supposed to be. And the thing about rejection is that it starts to play with your mind. You start to question your worth. You wonder if you're a good husband, if you're rejected by a spouse. You wonder if you're a good parent, if your children reject you. Now, now what, are, what are some ways that we feel rejection? Well, it could be as simple as someone just slamming the door. I don't want to hear what you have to say. It's rejected. You know, for those that are younger, teens, you ever been rejected by someone of the opposite sex? No? Well, I have. I have. I remember I was 17 years old, and they, they, it hurts. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? And, and you know, there was this, this young lady I was, I, I was not in love with. Because honestly, at 17, 16, for those that age, y'all don't even know what love is. All right? You, you usually don't. And so there was someone that I liked a lot. And um, you know, it was one of those things that you'd want to do almost anything. And I remember just expressing my feelings and I got nothing back. <laughs> but you see, when one door closes, <laughs> a, a better door opens. So, so my perspective on rejection has changed over the years. Because I always thought that rejection was that means that there's a problem with me. And sometimes it's not that there's a problem with you. But can I tell you, people don't like God's people. People don't like people that are doing things that are good. 
So as much as I was, and you know why she rejected me? Can I tell you why? What, what do y'all think? What do y'all think? Huh? Because she said that I was too nice. Like, like what? You know, I mean, if I had a leather jacket and, uh, you know, mohawk, maybe then. Um, but, but I think, ladies, I think you especially know, um, and, and gentlemen, just for the nice guys out there, the ladies do grow up. All right? Their, their mindset does change. All right? The rough guy with a car and the one that doesn't open the door, that just, just for a while, they'll, they'll get some burn. But give it a moment. They will turn around. So nice guys, stay who you are. There is hope for you. I'm telling you, there is hope for you. But in the moment when you are rejected, it, it almost feels like they're saying that you're not worthy of me. When you have a son or a daughter and they grow up and they say, you know what, I don't, I don't care what you say, I'm leaving the house. As a parent, you feel like, like what? Rejected? Is, it's probably what the prodigal father, the, the father of the prodigal son, the prodigal son said, you know what, Dad, just give me what's mine, and I'm getting out of here. And so the father was, no doubt, feeling hurt and feeling pain. But he was like, okay, son. But even as his son was gone, he was still waiting for his son to return home to you. I want to give you some advice for those that are feeling rejected by people or even by your job. How many of you know that your job will reject you as well. Like, like you work double, triple overtime. All right. And they still won't really love you. Don't ever put your value in things of people that are not God. Don't ever put your identity in things of people that are not God. Because what happens when you lose that thing, that job that your identity was in? All of a sudden you have no value because you get everything from a position, a paycheck, and then they reject you. And what are you left with? Then you start talking about, I used to be. I used to have. You start living in the past. Start telling about how you used to be this and how you used to go there and how you used to that. But what about now? Where are you going now? If you don't know how to deal with rejection, then you're going to always be living in the past. You're going to always be thinking about yourself through the eyes and perspective of someone else. And so here we have Jephthah was, now he became a judge of Israel. And let me kind of tell you a story. Now the book of Judges tells about these different men and women of God that God used to redeem the nation of Israel. As we mentioned last week and we talked about another judge last week, there was a cycle that they went into. They would love God, they would serve God, and then they would fall away. And after they fall away, then there was punishment that was given to them for their leaving God. And so God would then provide a judge to redeem them, to get them out of their difficulty. And then they would, you know, get back into right relationship with God. And it was good for years, six years, 18 years, 40 years. And then oftentimes it would fall back again. So Jephthah was considered to be a judge at the time, but not in the beginning. Because in the beginning, he was rejected. He was actually pushed away. And his story continues as this. Now, when his siblings found themselves in trouble, guess who they call? Guess who they call? They call Jephthah back. When they found themselves in need of a warrior, Guess who they welcomed back home? <laughs> when they needed something, guess who no longer was a reject anymore? But now they looked at him as, now he is our Savior. Can I tell you, it's kind of the same way with us. I don't know if you've ever been pushed away. 
And then as soon as that person or that company is in trouble, what do they do? They want to call you back. And some of us, we want to just put our nose up and say, you know what? Speak to the hand, right? But let's be honest. I think we've done that times. I think we've said that, you know what? You had your chance. I don't want to deal with you any longer. You know, Jesus probably knows a little too, thing or two about this. I, I, I mean, he was the very people he used to heal. The very people that he fed with his own hands, he broke bread. They turned their back on him. And the very first moment that he saw them, he didn't follow that instinct to reject them as well. well. What did he do? With his arms outspread, he says, come, touch the nails. Come touch me. Come feel me. I don't fault you for rejecting me because sometimes I'll, I'm going to share this with you. <laughs> that God would allow some things to happen in your life to get your attention and your mindset redirected on him. We sometimes have too much value on some of the relationships in our life that are not God. So that moment that we feel pushed away from them the moment that we go into work and then we all of a sudden we're told that, you know, we're going to close down this plant or, or maybe, you know, we, we don't have any need of you anymore. I guess the response from rejection, the first thing is sometimes anger or bitterness. You, you get mad. But the second thing that you do is you start to evaluate your worth. But for the believer, what he or she does at that point is very critical. Because what he or she should do at that point is now turn their eyes towards the Father. And like I said in Psalms 27, 10, that even when everyone else forsakes me, that they know. Do you know what type of comfort that is? Is that everyone else could push you away. But God still stays that you could be on the floor, scuffed knees, hurting and crying. And he doesn't laugh at you and say, I told you so. But no, he reaches out his hands and says, come up, my child. Come up, my son. That even when the world rejects you, I will never forsake you. In the book of Isaiah, it gives a prophecy that Jesus would be rejected and insulted and it kind of bothers me that why would Jesus have to go through something like this like what did he do all right all right with Jephthah was it his fault of who his daddy slept with what was it his fault but he was a byproduct of a situation that his siblings didn't like. Rejection isn't always your fault. But it is your journey. And you need to stop complaining about it. And start understanding that God can do something with it. It's not your fault, but it is your journey. So Jephthah here, we see that they call upon him because he was a mighty warrior. And I believe that the human side of him wanted to say, well, I don't really have time for you now. You, you, you pushed me away. You hurt me. And when you're hurt, the natural thing is to hurt the person or person's back that hurts you. It's called the reflex. But that's why we don't make our decisions and live our life based upon emotions. Because sometimes emotions will close doors that God is trying to open. 
So what we should do, even when we feel like we're worthless and not worth much, even for the people that reject us, we should forgive them. And that's very easy to say, but very hard to do. Father, we need you now. Father, we need you now. And I just took a pause. There's... I, I know that there's some people that you're here today or you're watching online and... I mean, you're really hurting. I mean, you feel like you've been pushed away by the people that love you most dear or those that should love you most dear and it's been affecting how you see yourself like you've been given promises or God has told you things about your life and wonderful things but where you are is so far from where God is giving you a glimpse of And the reason why is because you've allowed someone else's identity or definition for you to become something that you carry as your own name. But I'm here just to really remind and declare to you today, don't let anybody name your purpose. Don't let anybody make claim to your destiny. If God has given you a promise about who you are, don't allow disappointment to get you fearful of where you need to be. Your time is now. Your time is this moment. The way how you're feeling, the way how we're feeling, the way how I felt is not something that should have power over your current situation and if that's you this morning I would want to just want to pray with you this morning just raise your hand that you've been feeling kind of pushed away rejected not loved I see those hands yeah by loved ones by family by friends can we just take this moment just to pray? Dear Father, I call upon you as our Father today. God, we are here as your children. And God, there have been times, and even now, where we just feel we feel that we've been rejected and pushed aside and maybe we've been talked about maybe we've been lied on despised and hated but Father even at this moment dear God we ask for that healing touch from you that allows us to reshape our identity into what you have desired for our lives Lord, Father, I pray, God, that as difficult as our experience have been, let us not be defined by the buts in our life. Let us not be defined by the beginnings of our life. Let us not be defined by what our friends and so-called friends and others say about us. But, Father, I pray, God, that if we are a warrior, we'll be a warrior in spite of where we began. God, if you've called us to great things, God, we'll operate in greatness despite of the things that may have held us back previously. God, Father, even in relationship, God, I pray, Father, even at times when we feel rejected, I pray, Father, God, that you, Lord God, will realize and help us to realize that we are loved, that we're accepted, and that we're good enough. 
Because we all struggle with, are we good enough? Are we good enough to sit in your presence? Are we good enough to be called your son or daughter? Are, you, are we good enough to walk into the house of God? Are we good enough in the position that we are in, God? Are we good enough? And I don't know if we do the math, if we would ever really measure up. But Lord Father, I know that you've called us your children. And because of that call, we're better than what our resume says. We're stronger than our weakest moments. That we can overcome even the most difficult disasters. We're no longer named by our beginning. But we are called by our future. So Father, we claim that today. That no longer... <laughs> No longer will be the identity of others be the identity that we claim for ourselves. That will own that we are the children of God. And even if our mother, father, brother, sister, uncle, cousin, niece, son, daughter, neighbor, boss, employee, and even if any one of them forsake us, we understand and know that you will take us up. So, Father, we ask you once again just to restore our hearts, restore our minds, restore the path that you placed us on. God, every closed door, I believe God is an open door that you are, that you have opened for us. So, Lord Father, I pray, God, that you'll give us the courage to walk in the direction that you are sending us in. So we no longer look at disappointment as disaster, as a denial, as death. But, Father, we use disappointment as an opportunity to look to the Father and to be in his presence and to hear from the throne room of God. We look at disappointment. We look at rejection. We look at these moments as an opportunity to say that, you know what? I know who I am. I know who my Redeemer is. So, Father, we claim that today. Devil, no more buts in our life. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. When the opportunity comes up, when you are face to face with your accuser or to the one that has hurt you, to one that has pushed you away, the one that has made you feel less of a person, I pray that you will restrain your reflex to hurt them back. That you'll be able to say even to someone or something that has caused you disaster. That God can take the most difficult thing and make it into something beautiful. What's the word say? Beauty for ashes. Uh, he can take your, your past and he can turn it around into something better. So Jephthah, do you know what happened at the end of this, this passage? You know, they had asked him to come and help and then, you know, he went before, the, you know, he... He made this pledge before the Lord. Well, well, God, if you do this, then I know that is your leading. And, and so he decided to go and help, and, and he overcame the enemies of the people that he started with. Now, let me just show you this, because in the beginning, he had no inheritance. And in the end... He was buried 
in the city of Gilead. In, in the beginning, he was pushed away. But in the end, he was honored and celebrated. In the beginning, they said, you are the son of a prostitute. But in, in the end, they said that you're the leader of the nation. He judged the nation for six years, they say. This was the same one that they pushed away and say, you won't have an inheritance. Let me tell you something. Nobody can take away what God has reserved for you. Nobody can take away. Nobody can take away. What is yours is yours. And when God is for us, nobody, no person, no regime, no devil in hell can stand against us. See, the only thing he has is what I call is trickery of the mind. And so what he wants you to do, he wants you to believe the lie of who you are. So he wants to believe that Jephthah was a son of a prostitute. But Jephthah knew in his mind that I'm a warrior. So can you distance yourself from your beginning and realize who God has made you to be? Ha. Nobody can take Nobody, listen, no, tell your neighbor, nobody can take what God has for you. Some, find somebody else, say, nobody can take what God has for you. That's a good time right now just to praise the Lord. It's a good moment right now. Nobody can take what is mine. If it's promised you righteousness, it is yours. If it's promised you joy, it is yours. If it's promised you healing, guess what? It's yours as well. If it's promised you riches, even in this land, it's already yours. If it's promising that your children will come back home, it's yours. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Father, we thank you. Just stand to your feet with me. Father, we bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, I thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we bless you, Lord God. Father, I claim it, Lord Jesus. Everything, every lie that is spoken against the people of God. Father, we call them out as lies. God, we stand we place a wall between those lies and our destiny. God, we understand who you made us to be. And God, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. What is ours is ours. What God has for us is for us. So, Father, we thank you, God. In anticipation, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we bless you, Lord. Father, we thank you, God. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Just as you're standing, yeah, I, I want you to do this. It was about two or three weeks ago that God just placed this, this topic on my heart. About dealing with rejection and, and um, you know even as a pastor there are days that I feel like rejected as well you know, a church member calls up well pastor I don't like your speaking you know what that feels like uh, rejection that's what it is um, but you've got to learn how to deal with it Not everyone's going to like your cooking, but cook anyway. Not everyone's going to have an appetite for what you prepare, 
But you prepare anyway. Did you understand what I'm saying? Because if you put too much value on the opinions of others, you'll find yourself trying to please and live your life according to what other people say. So you find yourself going here. If this is not good, okay, well, let me go over here. Let, you, you, know, you, 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 you find yourself going in circles trying to please men. The same men that will talk about you and leave you. You're, you're trying to change your whole life around just to please them. But if you just only just please God, just, just kind of take, just, just stop worrying about everybody else and what they got to say. Because if God is for you, <laughs> mm. so, so this is what I want you to do. I want, to think, I want you to think about those people that have hurt you, that have pushed you away, that have rejected you, that have lied in you, that have despised you, that have said dangerous things about you, that have pushed you, you know, that have said that you won't amount to much. And I want you to forgive them right now. Yes. Because if you don't forgive them, then you will never be released yes. to receive what God has for you. You think that is what people say about you that's holding you back. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It's what you think about you that is holding you back. And as long as you still are bitter and anger at those people in your life for what they've done, it's like you allowed a chain to be your anchor. And as much as you're trying to run from that identity, you're stuck. So it still hurts when so-and-so walks past the water cooler. It still bothers you because you haven't forgiven them. All right, you know what I'm talking about. Every time you hear that person's name, you kiss you. You, you, you know what I'm saying. It, like, it's, it's like a reflex. And, and you do it because in some ways what they've done is that they've rejected you and you've held on to that rejection as if it's your current situation. But it doesn't have to be. So think about those person. Think about that company that didn't treat you right. That manager. Forgive him. Listen, they hated Jesus too. So what do you think they're going to do with you? They spat. They spat at him. They talked about him. The same people he fed. So what do you think they're going to do with you and I? Take a couple of moments. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. And you talk with your father. And, and after service, you may need to text some people. Because just as much as you think that you can forgive somebody in your heart, unless you actually demonstrate it, I really don't think that's real forgiveness. So who has hurt you? Uh, I'm going to give you this last bit of advice before I'm going to ask you to hit this time to pray. Forgiving them does not mean that they wasn't wrong. Forgiveness means that they deserve your scorn, but you're going to release them anyway. That you should, you have the right to be angry at them, that you did something that's wrong. But forgiveness says, I understand that you've done something that's wrong and that has hurt me. But guess what? I release you anyway. <laughs> that's going to help somebody later on. I, I should be mad. What you did was wrong. You abused me. You hurt me. You lied to me. I, I get it. It's wrong. But guess what? I don't need to be mad about it anymore. Because that's not my identity. Take a few moments. Who is that person? Yes. Who's those persons? Talk to the Father. In fact, I want you to pray for them. I want you to pray that God will bless them. I want you to pray that God will just honor them and elevate them. 
Don't ask God to deal with them. Don't be, don't be praying madness on people. No, ask God to bless them. Somebody may be stolen from you, ask God to bless them even more. Bless their finances. Hmm. Somebody has walked out with, on you with a relationship, ask God to make them better for the next person that they meet. Come on. Stop being so selfish. Release them. And you'll find that you're releasing yourself as well. Yes. So, Father, as we think of those, the names. God, we remember even the pain that we felt. But God, we don't want to feel that way anymore. God, we don't want to hold on to that weight, that baggage any longer. So Father God, we release them. God, we forgive them. Because as your word says that if we won't forgive others, you won't forgive us. Because God, we understand that we also have hurt you. That we also have turned our backs on you. That we also have rejected you at times. Yet you also forgave us. So you have taught us by example. And release those persons that have wronged us and we say it's cool God may you bless them may you order their footsteps may you bless their going in and their coming out may you send angels to protect them may you keep them right Can you, may you keep them safe and May you open doors of opportunity. May you make that man a better husband for his future wife. May you make that woman a better wife for her future. God, may you make those people that wronged me, can you make them just better friends, Lord God? Because maybe sometimes we need to be pushed away from men so that we cannot find ourselves with God so God we thank you and we release them in the name of Jesus we pray and we say amen 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 come on and bless the Lord